If not, uh, Senator Cortez Masto is next from her office, and Cortez Masto from Nevada. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Secretary, thank you for being here. But let me just uh, couch a couple of things uh, in response to Senator Scott. One, let's not forget, uh, we started down this path with a $1.9 trillion uh, uh, tax cuts for the very wealthy uh, that have not been paid for. Uh, my colleagues need to forget that's kind of where we started here. The rest are, are, are uh, bipartisan, and the bipartisan infrastructure package, not only is it paid for, it's a benefit to the state of Nevada, and it's long-term investments uh, over the years. So that's one. Two, I want to associate myself with Senator Menendez's comments, uh, both about uh, abortion restriction and its economic impact on women. It is true. There are studies that show that. I would ask Senator Scott this question. Um, you can't know everyone's circumstances. I appreciate his circumstances, and, it, and, and he is very proud of it. I think that's fantastic. But why impose your experience and your circumstances on others until you walk in their shoes? That's all we're asking. Um, and then let me start with, um, Secretary, the cryptocurrency, because I do believe, um, and I want to be a part of this discussion, we do need a regulatory framework for stable coins. Last week, Fabio Panetta, one of the European Central Bank's six executive board members, noted that the cryptocurrency market is now larger than the subprime mortgage market, uh, uh, which was triggered the global financial crisis. Nobody knows that better than uh, us in the state of Nevada. And he says this, $1.3 trillion uh, market shows strikingly similar dynamics. There are about 10,000 crypto assets now. So my question, um, Madam Secretary, is one financial risk pros, um, posed by cryptocurrencies is the concentration of ownership. Do you see any financial risk because professional investors and high net worth individuals hold almost two thirds of the Bitcoin supply? So I'm not sure if um, the concentration of holdings among um, high wealth investors, if that's true, poses in and of itself a financial risk unless those investors happen to be leveraged so that a decline in the value of the assets can trigger financial distress, which spills over to others. But um, certainly I think there are many uh, risks associated with uh, cryptocurrencies, um, and the, the president has asked uh, the Treasury and FSOC to look at those risks we will issue a comprehensive report shortly. The president's working group is also has already described the risks we see in connection with one form of crypto assets, which is stable coins. And there we see run risks, which could threaten financial stability, risks associated with the payment system and its integrity, and risks associated with um, increased concentration if stable coins are issued by uh, firms that already have substantial market market power. Um, so we definitely see significant risks here. Thank you. Let, let me jump to something else that is uh, impacting us in the state of Nevada, which is affordable housing uh, and the lack of, of the housing supply. Our nation is short 5 million homes. Uh, building homes, uh, especially those affordable for working families and seniors and so many others, should be our top priority. Uh, can you address the financial stability risks to our economy posed by the increase in non-bank mortgage companies providing residential home financing? Well, it's certainly true that non-bank mortgage companies are playing a very large role they tend to be quite dependent on short-run financing. And um, if there's volatility in the markets and a loss of that access, I do see some risks uh, relating to the role of non-banks uh, in the mortgage market. Thank you. Uh, and then finally, uh, I know, uh, and you talked about this, um, the administration has taken a, a leading role in assessing the climate-related risk to financial stability through some scenario analysis and disclosures. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, what have the financial regulatory agencies learned from those scenario analysis and disclosure requirements? Is that what you're referring to in some of the reporting that's been done? 
Well, um, in other, a number of central banks around the world, I think the Bank of England is most advanced, have been evaluating the risks to key financial institutions by um, looking at how they would fare, what their losses in financial position would be if particular climate scenarios were to play out and looking at different scenarios, one where there's a gradual imposition of policies to address climate change, others where there is very little action and then a great deal of action. Um, they design these scenarios and then use them to assess risk to financial institutions. And many of our supervisors are looking to do similar exercises, and it makes sense for FSOC to work jointly on trying to design such scenarios and collect the data that would be necessary to translate those scenarios into concrete assessments of risk to the particular financial institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cortez Masto. 